I thank you for being with me today. Another great show today with some wonderful ladies that are doing God's work in the world that, of course, I met at the Greater Dallas Coalition Monthly Meeting where you too can really be inspired by getting to hear ground floor work being done to help South Dallas be transformed into the place it can be instead of the place it sadly is. And these ladies are really doing a great job spreading God's word through acts of love and kindness and care to helping the needy. We have Regina and Alice with me today. Thank you ladies for being with me and I'm looking forward to learning about how the Holy Spirit is shining through your lives and making other people's lives better, showing Christ's love. So tell me about what you're up to. Well, we have uh, an outreach ministry. We are Positive Reflection Ministries and we are a 501c3 nonprofit tax exempt and again we are an outreach that uh, meets the need of the community. And what community is that primarily? We are not zip code restricted. That is one of the things that we are so excited about is that we have no zip code restrictions. So wherever you are, whatever the need, if they reach us, we reach out and we try to meet that need. We are doing some regular things, uh, things on a regular basis where we're feeding the community once a month. That's the last Saturday of every month from 10 to one. We have that project in place because we know that along with the destitute, there are working poor. So we don't have a restriction on the need for whatever reason, we will uh, provide the groceries. And uh, we provide meat, which is something that most pantries do not uh, provide. So we have the meat, produce, canned goods, dry goods, and we have volunteers that help us box that food up and on a Friday. So on Fridays, we go to the warehouse, get the food and bring it back to the location, box it up on Saturday morning. We have more volunteers. And the most exciting thing is that these volunteers treat everyone with dignity. There is, it's such a wonderful atmosphere. I know I may be sounding like I'm trying to sell, uh, sell it, but it's, it's sincere. They love the Lord, they love people, and they're loving what they're doing, and that's helping. So if they, we have seniors that are challenged physically, we have young people that love to carry that box of food to their car. They, they can take it themselves, or we have volunteers that do that. And like any other organization, we need more volunteers because the need is getting greater. We, I believe, have serviced at least four to 5,000 people a year so far. And each year we're finding that we're growing, the need is growing. So that has been one of our ventures that we have been very excited about and have uh, constantly been growing. And we had no idea that God was gonna take us in that direction, but it is exploding and we are so excited that, that it's happening for the community. And like I said, it is no zip code restriction involved. I just wanna add um, that we're located in the Pleasant Grove area. We're at 1910. North St. Augustine Road. We're hubbed out of the Pleasant Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And once a month, as she said, this is what we do. Um, We normally feed people that actually eat off the food that we give. Anywhere from three to 500 people eat off of that food per month. month. And there are some instances, I'm just kind of piggybacking on what she's saying. Mm -hmm. There are some instances where there's people that come with no ride, they, they, either they walk mm-hmm. or somebody drop them off. So there's been many instances where we had to stop and one of the volunteers would take these folks home. Uh, we have uh, anywhere from two to 300 <coughs> seniors that come through mm-hmm. for food. Uh, we do have the volunteers there. The volunteers that's there, we have Raw Bone Dominoes who has been excellent, excellent. and I have to give them 
their props. Mm -hmm. uh, every month they're there mm -hmm. and on a Saturday and they are so joyous and and humble Passionate. that everybody come through that door, let us take your food to the car for you. So we are a unique organization in the way we run the food pantry. Mm -hmm. um, we have people that go out while they're in line and literally talk to them and find out what's going on with them. What are, what's the next need that they may need? Mm -hmm. See if we can help in that area, in that resource area. Um, we have uh, folks that when they walk through the door, they get a smile. Mm -hmm. They don't get a frown. And they may come in with their head down sometimes, yeah. but when they walk out that door with that food, their mm -hmm. head is up and they're smiling. Yeah. And they're looking <laughs> at us like, and all like, where am I? Am I at this food pantry or where am I? <laughs> So it's, uh, we wanted Very to, we, we strive mm -hmm. uh, for dignity and respect for everybody yes. because they'll do that due diligence. It's hard uh, to come to a food pantry. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to come and say, I need help. And when they do come, you know, you have your head down, you're embarrassed. We don't want them to leave that way. No. <coughs> no. Well, that's right. And, you know, one of the things I think that, a lot of people who are watching this show and living in a more affluent neighborhood may be thinking, well, in a poor neighborhood, there isn't any brotherly love. Everybody's mm -hmm. a doggy dog. That's actually not the case. The case no, is, not. in many cases, in the poor neighborhoods, in a place where people may just barely be above needing to go to the food pantry, yeah. mm -hmm. or in some cases, are going to the food pantry mm -hmm. and volunteering there mm -hmm. to help their fellow yeah, exactly. man. Mm -hmm. and showing that love back mm -hmm. yes. and let the Holy Spirit can change your life to where you're compelled joyfully to give time and money to help your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And these ladies have got that joy mm -hmm. and are experiencing the satisfaction and peace that comes from letting the Holy Spirit into your life and, and David, doing the Lord's work. We, uh, we don't have grant money. We are grassroots out of pocket. Our board is dedicated and they are selfless when it comes to helping meet our goals every month to make the provisions. The donations we get, we're probably, our families are tired of us, but we're going back to them again and, <laughs> and uh, they're excited too about what comes out of it. And we, we just, you know, we're doing it from our heart. If we had grant money or <coughs> uh, funding, we probably could do a, reach more people mm -hmm. and expand it to different locations. But right now, it is by the grace of God that we are doing what we're doing. And we are so excited about seeing God's work because he took the, the, fish and the, and the loaves of bread and he fed 5,000. So <laughs> he's doing, it seems like he's doing the same thing with, with how we're uh, operating to make, meet those needs <coughs> of the people that come through that. that and door. I also want to add that the food pantry is not the only thing that we do. We assist with utilities mm -hmm. um, until the funds run out. Yes. Uh, we assist, <laughs> assist with the utilities. Uh, the water, the lights, and the gas. Mm -hmm. We also do Thanksgiving food prep baskets. Uh, we have a program uh, that we do once a year for back to school. It's called WOKE. Uh, and that means working for children's education, working mm -hmm. on kids' education. <coughs> mm -hmm. So we give, last year we gave about 550 kids school mm -hmm. supplies. And I have to also say thank you again to World Vision because I don't want to leave our partners out. Yes. Um, World Vision and also I thank Pleasant Zion Missionary Baptist Church awesome. for partnering with us and allowing us to be in that church yes. to do this. Mm -hmm. But we are outgrowing it every day, every time we go back. We're outgrowing it. We need a bigger space. But they have never said no to us. So we they keep never. on moving by the grace of God. Uh, Christmas. Christmas time. Christmas. I think we did 350 kids for toys. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So everything that's out there, mm -hmm. uh, any holiday, year, we're mm -hmm. into it. And we had a special Christmas this year. Yes. I want to share yes. that with you. Um, we tapped into the kids with uh, <clears throat> disabilities mm -hmm. and the kids that is in need. And we brought those kids in first and let them shop for their parents. Mm 
Yes. And uh, special a needs kids. It was a really experience. special program. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Yes. And then we brought the other kids in after that. Mm -hmm. because <laughs> some of the kids, you know, they can't stand noise. And they, can, you know, they have different issues. So we had to respect that. But they came in and they were wonderful. We even showed them how to wrap gifts. So that was a really, really <coughs> unique experience. And the love that you have for these kids and see their faces, oh my God. And it's some of the parents um, were really moved by that, that an organization would take the time to let their special needs child take their time and choose a gift. <clears throat> Uh, they took their time and chose the gift. It wasn't like, well, do you want your mommy or daddy to have this? They were, and the expression on these parents' faces were so amazing. I looked into it, and it just warmed my heart to see that um, they were amazed that their, their child would engage in that process. So it was uh, rewarding for us to do that. I think that was uh, a good thing that we did this year. It it's a fantastic different. thing, and you can go online and reach out to them, and you're hearing how super efficient and spirit-driven this organization is. They will really make a big jump with your extra money, can really bootstrap this organization up to greater things. I mean, doing it on a shoestring, serving thousands of people <laughs> food every year, 350 kids Christmas. I mean, this is real outreach, big outreach that many times a church of multi-million dollar budget may not serve a lot more kids, <clears throat> may not be involved in feeding. So this is a great ministry and it's just one of the inspiring examples mm -hmm. that you will see if you come to one of the monthly Greater Dallas Coalition meetings mm -hmm. on the third Wednesday of the month. Go to our website. You can learn more about our meetings. Of course, you can give to Greater Dallas Coalition. I don't want to take a thing away from these ladies because I love to promote people that are doing the Lord's work, but we're doing the Lord's work at the Great Dallas Coalition too. So my only answer to that dilemma is mm -hmm. give to us, and give to them. Mm -hmm. Do the Lord's work by giving your time and money joyfully. They've got volunteer opportunities. Great Dallas Coalition has volunteer opportunities. The good news is the organizations that I have on this show and I talk about are ones that are really spirit-filled and not just in it in kind of a mercenary way. These ladies are doing the world's work in a joyful, sacrificial way, not taking back out of things, not living a high life on the backs of the poor, but trying to uplift people and bring them up and give them joy and dignity. Mm -hmm. So this is really the solution to the world's problems is letting the Holy Spirit work through these ladies and work through you and all of us that profess to be Christians and mm -hmm. accept Jesus as our Savior comes with the catch that you have to let the Holy Spirit be at home in your life mm -hmm. and transform you into a child of God. So they're doing great things, and you all have an event coming up later this month, we right? We do, we do. Uh, uh, for you, the community is every Saturday, the last Saturday of every month. So there's two days. On Friday, we pre-box the food. On Saturday, we distribute the food. So we need volunteers on Sar on Friday, I'm sorry, the uh, on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. We need them. Um, we need all the help we can because we have to unload a truck with the meat. We pick up at Sharing Life and we bring the food over. We have to put it in freezers until the next morning. And then that's when it's distributed. So well, I am really encouraging you, if you would like to please volunteer, by all means call me at 214-208-5536. I'm normally answering the phone. So uh, if you could do that, we would appreciate that. Uh, of course, yes, we do need money. And also, yes, we do need a van at this point because we are having to pay for a U-Haul to move the food at this yeah. point. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we need a van. If somebody want to donate us a van, 
God bless you. <laughs> uh, if you want to donate money to help get a van, God, God bless, bless you. <laughs> so this is where we are right now. Uh, uh, we have a spring fling that's coming, a thing we call spring fling that we're going to be doing. The first fish fry. Uh, it's going to be a fi fish fry, <laughs> and we'll make sure we get that out on the website. Come by and buy a fish dinner. This is a fundraiser for us to March try to keep funds second. coming in and in. Yeah. Um, March 2nd. March 2nd. Okay. Mm-hmm. At the so good. Yes. Yeah, same address where we give the food out, uh, 1910 St. Augustine Road, and I believe it started at 10 on yeah. that day. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the, w the website does have the details on that. That's the, the after the feeding of the community on February. So March 2nd, come and support us and buy some fish. We have one lady that knows how to cook, and uh, I think they say if you want to make you want to slap your mama, but <laughs> but it's awesome. She's a very good, and she donates her time in doing that, so we appreciate her as well. I just want to share a story uh, that happened uh, last year with us, with this family. This lady had four kids, I do believe, mm -hmm. herself, uh, lived over in Oak Cliff, and Another lady was, it was lit summer, walking down the street as she was standing on the porch. This is the story she tell me. She's standing on the porch and this lady is being Two wheeled kids. down the street with her children. And the daughter asked, could you give us some water? And she gave them some water and then the daughter asked, can we stay here? Because we have nowhere to go. She took these people into her home with four other kids. You hear what I'm saying? With what she had, mom ended up dying, the lady she took in. But before she passed, she asked her, please do not give my kids back to my family. And she kept that promise and she was raising five other kids. So it was a total of nine kids in their nine house. Nine kids. My God. And uh, one of the, a minister I ran across <clears throat> was asking me how can he get some help for her. And that's when we began to work. We yes. went to work immediately. We were able to get them beds, beds. donated, because mm -hmm. once we did the assessment in the house, yeah. they could not believe what we saw. They had no food. They had nothing. I think the refrigerator had just gone The refrigerator gone was out. gone. We got the refrigerator. Yeah, and so it's not just the, the it's come once a needed. month kind of yeah. come and get yeah. your help. It's an outreach for whatever you need that, we, that, that God will open the door for us to meet. That's where we are. That's where we are. That's where we are. Well, you all are in a wonderful, holy place doing God's work and yeah. <clears throat> getting that peace in your life that comes mm -hmm. from really spreading God's love and mm -hmm. letting it shine through you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know about you all. I hope that you have the peace that passes understanding in your life mm -hmm. that really comes from opening your heart to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit and saying, Lord, let me be your vessel. But Every week I'm inspired by getting to visit with people that are spirit-filled and spirit-led who are doing God's work in a variety of ways, all of them a little different, all of them a little unique, and there's an opportunity for you that is just right for you. It's what you're most comfortable with. Maybe it's working with children. Maybe it's working with the disabled. Maybe it's working with the older people. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just serving in an administrative role like they have volunteer opportunities where you can just come on Friday and train, move food from the van mm -hmm. to the freezers, package things up for people. If you're not comfortable interacting, but I will say there's nothing more enriching than personally interacting and sharing love with someone who's in need and seeing the gratitude and joy that comes from that. They talked a little bit about that earlier, about people that come to their feedings that come in downbeat and mm -hmm. haggard and beat down, and after being loved on and validated and lifted up, they walk away with a positive self-esteem. And that's what's so important, is not to beat people down and say, you're sorry, we'll give you some food, but you're no good, <laughs> instead of saying, we love you and we want to see you thrive mm -hmm. and grow. Amen. So Amen. they're doing some great things mm -hmm. and I hope you'll go to their website mm -hmm. and reach out to them, give them money, 
volunteer, as you heard, they've got volunteer opportunities, and uh, they're going to do the Lord's work, and they can do more of it with your help. Amen. And David, I'd like to say one more thing about these mustard seeds. We, uh, this, it's, this actually was a, my point of contact on here. It says point of contact V1. And we encourage people through these mustard seeds that we not only say we have a, can we give you a prayer? We have some mustard seeds for faith and a prayer for you. So we pass these mustard seeds out and people have kept them for years and called us back and say, wow, I just found this in my Bible. I know it's been a long time since I gave, you gave this to me, but it has been a tool of inspiration for people. And we want to spread that point of contact. And we want, we thank our, our uh, partners that, con that, that partner with us for being that point of contact, helping us to reach the community and what they need. And um, I hope if anyone is familiar with these or gotten them, if not, just give us a call and we'll send you some mustard seeds and a prayer for faith. Fantastic. Well, it is wonderful. And the story of the mustard seed is strong about how a tiny little bit of faith can grow mm -hmm. into being a mighty effort yes, and yes. accomplishing so much. And I hear that on my show, people that have gone from a little tiny operation mm -hmm. that served just one or two people to growing to be a big organization, mm -hmm. much bigger and growing just like you all are growing. Yes, sir. And doing things to do the Lord's work in a bigger and bigger way as more people come alongside you and work with you. Mm -hmm. So I do hope that you've been inspired by hearing about this really wonderful program and realizing that you don't have to have a huge budget to do the Lord's work. Amen. You Amen. can do the Lord's work on a low budget. You don't have to give a huge donation to be a star. Amen. Any donation mm -hmm. is doing the Lord's work, especially if it's done out of love and not out of a sense mm -hmm. of trying to build self-righteousness mm -hmm. and esteem. Yes. But, uh, I'm so glad to hear people doing positive work. And the Pleasant Grove area is one that desperately needs more yes, help. Sir. The need is great there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Great Dallas Coalition networks, nonprofits, both large and small, across the southern tier of the city, mm -hmm. serving people from out to the east to out to the west, doing the Lord's work. We have a wonderful children's day camp every summer, free of charge in the Pleasant Grove area at a very fine charter school that's free of charge to the kids. It really gives them super reinforcement. And if you have a high school senior who's interested in football and capable athletically, we have a yearly football combine that we take kids to that you can go to the Dallas Champions Academy website and find out more about this. It happens in March, and we've gotten over 26 kids full college scholarships through our efforts, which is really phenomenal awesome. for a kid to get to go to college mm -hmm. yeah. and accrue no debt mm -hmm. and be that first in the family to get a college education. Mm -hmm. Really transforming lives, just like you all are transforming lives mm -hmm. down in your community yes. and that's really you know it's great to get out of your little community if you're lucky enough to live mm -hmm. in a really affluent neighborhood mm -hmm. that has no direct needs get yourself out of that affluent neighborhood and get down to where the needs mm -hmm. are critical mm -hmm. and you will find gratitude and happiness for your service but this Amen. is a way to do that Amen. but the heartening thing is these ladies are right in the community giving back to their fellow citizens who are less fortunate themselves yes, sir. and building up mm -hmm. their community and trying to break the cycle every way they it, can. Yes, sir. It is uh, so important that uh, we go beyond the pew. And a lot of us are, are willing to do that. But if you don't know where to go or <clears throat> where to begin, just reach out to us at Positive Reflection Ministries. Uh, you can Google us and go to our website. We do have a link for volunteers. We have a link for donations. We'd be happy 
be happy to have you uh, support us in our efforts to meet the needs of, of the community. And then when we say community, we don't just mean Pleasant Grove. It's our community is all over and it extended. It's just like extended family. So we have the compassion, we have the desire, and we have the, the will, but we need your help. We need the help of, of anyone that has a heart to serve God in serving his people. Well, that's what it's about, is joyfully giving yourself to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen and to doing that. doing the work, doing the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is the danger zone. If, if you're not feeling moved to give joyfully and excessively mm -hmm. of your time and money to helping others, it's a real warning sign that you haven't let the Holy Spirit into your life. Because the Holy Spirit does not mm -hmm. sit still. The Holy Spirit doesn't come into your life and say, mm -hmm. David, all you need to do is go to church once a week, put a few mm -hmm. dollars in the plate, mm -hmm. and you're good to go for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. One hour a week, a few dollars mm -hmm. a week, mm -hmm. you're done. No, 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 that is not how the Holy Spirit works. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit grabs all of you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want just a little. God doesn't want just a handout. He doesn't want just a tiny speck. Mm -hmm. He wants you. Mm -hmm. He wants your whole life to be devoted to joyfully loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you're yet to feel that drive in your heart, please say a prayer and say, Lord, let the Holy Spirit come into me. Mm -hmm. Give me the power of the Spirit and let your love shine through me. And my hope is that you will almost immediately start feeling a compelling, joyful need mm -hmm. to give time and money to help others. And these ladies are a great way to get involved. Of course, I have a pet peeve for Greater Dallas Coalition because I'm the <laughs> treasurer <laughs> and I know how great a job we do with your money. Right. But I'll tell you, these ladies are doing even great work with what they're doing and they can certainly need both your time and money and put it to work, yes, sharing love and growing people and mm -hmm. faith yes, and reaching. Sir. And you know, this utility program of rescuing people who are in trouble with their bills, mm -hmm. that's a strong ministry and a mm -hmm. critical need. Yes, it is. And uh, so I hope we'll get some support generated from that yes. and for that. And uh, you know, when you hear the compelling outreach that some people, in a poor community are doing for their fellow man. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those of us who live in an affluent, comfortable life aren't doing near as much as we should. And that's you know one reason why Christ said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich yes. man to get into heaven because we can just get way too self-centered. So mm -hmm. think about that mm -hmm. as we go through our day and as you worship and pray, may the Holy Spirit enter your life and give you the peace that passes understanding. And I hope you all have a great week. Take care. Amen. Amen. All right.